Hello, welcome to another video from Far North Bushcraft and Survival. Many of you are comfortable with flint and steel fire as a primitive fire lighting method, uh, but maybe not so much with uh, friction fire. Well, uh, I'm going to get into a method of survival uh, flint and steel fire lighting. Okay, you, you may be in a situation where your lighter is just about out of, of butane or you're just about out of matches and you didn't bring any more with you and, and uh, you're about to get in trouble. Uh, you need to be able to continue making fire as you try to travel to get yourself out, say. Okay, stay with me. I'm going to show you what you can do. Well, first of all, you know, I highly recommend going prepared. I highly recommend being prepared so that you don't run out of your butane in your lighter and you don't run out of uh, matches or lose your ferro rod. Uh, you know, I recommend being prepared. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to show you how you can get set up to continuously light fires uh, with the flint and steel method using uh, bushcraft or survival type methods. Let's get into the nitty gritty. One good uh, material for charring that you can find in the woods, uh, usually fairly easy, is uh, punk wood. Punk wood makes a great material for charring. Now, let's go up here and look at this uh, broken off cottonwood tree. Here we are at the base of the cottonwood tree. Look at that, some prime some prime punk wood. This piece is laying down here. This is the rest of the tree. All right, before we go back to the camp, uh, first of all, yeah, right there's the, the uh, broken off tree with all the punk wood. Okay, we're on a creek here, and you might want to look around and grab you a piece of quartz. And the quartz is very common. Uh, so it's very common in areas, mountainous areas, where there's, uh, you know, creeks, lakes, and such. All right, we're back at the camp. Uh, creek is just right over there and there's that broken down cottonwood right there okay now what we need is some dead leaves so let's gather uh, some dead leaves small pile uh, now these are going to need to be dry here's an excellent place right here gather up a bunch of them and we'll take them back to the camp and Add them to the stack we've already got here. All right, I'll show you what's next. Okay, now we've got two piles here uh, of dried leaves. You'll see what that's for in a minute. Now what we need is some green leaves. Let's go get them. Here's some over here. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll gather these right here. And uh, we'll gather these. All right. And we'll gather some more. And we'll meet you back at the camp. Okay, I think we got plenty together here now. So, uh, okay, let's see here. There's a few more. Let's get. 
All right, that should be plenty. Now, let's go to the next step. True, in order to char materials, you have to have a fire. So really, how useful is this knowledge that I'm sharing with you? Well, in reality, it could be extremely useful. It could make the difference between life and death in certain situations. So it's a good uh, piece of knowledge just to put back in your memory bank and to keep in mind and maybe practice a little bit to, you know, so that you know you can do it. All right, here's a piece of punk wood that we got from that cotton tree up the creek just a little ways. Well, let's do some charring. Now, you're probably used to seeing uh, materials charred in tins. Well, when you're out in the backwoods, chances are you may not find tins. So that's, that's uh, the approach we're going to take in this video, is how to do it without a tin. Now let's, uh, let's give this a char. All right. Uh, we're going to put it right there in the fire. And uh, we're going to get it burning real good, get it good and charred. Okay, I think we're about done, and I'm going to grab it and show you what we're going to do with it next. Okay, we're going to put it right here on these leaves. Now what we got to do is we got to cover it up with another layer of leaves, and now we got to cover it up with the green leaves. Okay. Now why? Why the dead leaves? Why the green leaves? Okay, the green leaves, they're gonna have a lot of moisture in them. And the dead leaves, they're all dried out. Uh, unless they're laying on wet ground or there's been a recent uh, rain. Okay, so the dead leaves are to protect the char from moisture and the green leaves are, are to help seal out the oxygen cut down the oxygen to the char so <coughs> excuse me so you want to just hold this here for I don't know uh, uh, one or two minutes uh, long enough that all the char, uh, all the, the coal, the embers that's glowing on here will uh, go out for lack of oxygen. So we'll come back here in a little bit when this is cooled down. All right, it's been several minutes. I think we're okay. Let's uh, take a look. You got to cut off that oxygen in order to get uh, good char. Okay. It's still uh, plenty warm, but uh, looks like all the embers are dead. Yeah, I believe they're all dead now. Yep. All right, let's see what we can do with this. Okay, I went up and I, I went ahead and charged several pieces. Uh, the first piece I charred was two. Uh, I, I charred it too much and it was too weak 
to be able to hold on the rock here and stand up to the abuse of striking. So uh, I charred up several more. Now uh, let's see what we can do. This, uh, this is the punk wood that I collected up at that cottonwood and this is the uh, this is a piece of quartz that I found on the creek and I broke it up to get a sharp edge. I'm using my silky saw here. Uh, it sparks real well. Hopefully you can see them sparks. The reason why this took me so long to get an ember was that uh, I d hadn't dried out the punk wood first before I charred it. It needs to be very dry, so set it beside the fire and uh, get it dried out very well before charring. We got one. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, You may have to work at this quite a bit, uh, as I did, to get it to work. But it will work with patience and uh, and and correct procedure. There we go. We got a fire. <coughs> Hopefully you can see that in the in the camera lens, even if it's a bit sunny here. Before we leave, I want to uh, make a point to uh, say that there are many natural materials that are great for charring, uh, not just uh, punk wood, but many different uh, tree fungi uh, like uh, horse hoof fungus, uh, amadou, uh, different, quite a few various uh, tree fungi. Uh, once they're dried out, they make good charred material. Uh, even dried moss uh, oftentimes will make a, a good dried charred material. Uh, chaga will make a good charred material, but uh, chaga in itself, if you have some good quality chaga, it may not even need to be charred. Uh, it may catch a spark on its own. Well, thanks for joining me, and I hope you learned something on this video. And uh, you guys take care. We'll see you on the next video. Have a good week.
If you enjoyed this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up and to share it, as well as subscribe so you don't miss any more. And check out these suggested videos here. Thank you.